Welcome back to the playlist on amino acid catabolism. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to very, very briefly discuss the mechanism of glutamate dehydrogenase. And what I want to what I want to tell you about this mechanism is it's something referred to as an oxidative deamination. The deamination in the name comes from the fact that we are going to deaminate it. In other words, one of the products of this reaction is going to be ammonia. And of course, that ammonia will be shuttled into the urea cycle, where it will be activated by carbon wheel phosphate synthetase 1 so that it can ultimately be excreted as urea. The other product we're going to get out of this is going to be alpha ketoglutarate, which will then go into the TCA cycle. But the reason it's called oxidative is that the initial step in the mechanism involves oxidation using either NAD or NADP. And so the molecule that I've drawn here, at this point right here, this is the nicotinamide ring of both NAD and NADP. Now, this is the only functional part of the molecule, and so it's the only part that I've drawn. This is the component in which the chemistry will occur. The very first part of the mechanism, which is really the only one we're going to go into any detail on, is going to be an initial deprotonation by a base in the active site, and this is going to be the formation of a shift base. So when the shift base forms, that's going to expel this hydride, which will come and attack this carbon on top of the nicotinamide ring, which will essentially form force a double bond rearrangement and the latter pi bond ends up as a lone pair on that nitrogen atom of the nicotinamide ring. So in the process what we generate is either NADPH or we generate NADH. Okay, And the unique thing about this enzyme or at least largely unique. There are a few other enzymes like this, but it can react with either NADP plus or NAD plus. It can react with either one. So depending on what you have floating around the cell, you're going to get a multitude of products. And by the way, this particular enzyme is expressed at high concentrations in the mitochondrial matrix. So glutamate, which is our reactant here, this is glutamate. Glutamate can uh, be shuttled through the mitochondrial membrane and ultimately end up in the matrix where it can react with this enzyme. Now the only part of this mechanism that I really want to show you is going to be the shift base formation. This is basically the product once we oxidize glutamate, when we oxidize the alpha carbon. And notice the mechanism is basically going to be the analog. It's the analog of the hydroxyl oxidation into a ketone. Notice if you look at the mechanism, it is the analog. Okay, so now we have this shift base version of glutamate, and it's effectively the oxidized version. And the reason I'm not showing you the rest of the mechanism is because it gets really, really, really convoluted, and it's not going to be worth your time to look at it. What I will say about it, though, is that you're going to have a shift base hydrolysis. And if you need help learning how to predict products of shift base hydrolyses, I have a whole a video on predicting the products of shift base hydrolysis and you can certainly go look at that on my YouTube channel but suffice it to say this group right here that I'm about to circle this group right here is effectively going to get replaced with a carbonyl okay so the carbonyl that we have is going to be characteristic of alpha ketoglutarate so we're going to take the shift base glutamate and convert it to alpha ketoglutarate and like we've mentioned in past videos the alpha ketoglutarate can go into the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the citric acid cycle and there it can be used to produce energy we saw that you can catabolize glutamate down into alpha ketoglutarate, which can then go and enter the TCA cycle. And like we mentioned, this particular reaction is known as oxidative deamination. The reason is because you're oxidizing glutamate first into its shift base form, and then you're going to do the deamination. So in the final step, once you do the shift base hydrolysis, around here, this is where you should see the production of ammonia, or as we know it, physiological pH, ammonium. And the ammonia will be activated by carbon wheel phosphate synthetase 1, and that prepares it for entry into the urea cycle, 
with which it can be excreted as urea. And of course, alpha ketoglutarate goes into the TCA cycle. So why would you do this process? Well, this is the catabolic pathway for glutamate. So the main thing to understand here is that glutamate dehydrogenase, which is this enzyme, is going to catabolize glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate. And so therefore, it degrades it into something that can enter the TCA cycle. And that will be degraded by alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. See you in the next video.